If you've been trying to learn to code and transition into tech, but you still can't land a single interview, or worse, you've sent out dozens of resumes and you're still not even getting a reply back, this video is for you because here's the truth. Most junior developer resumes absolutely suck. I mean, they all use the same templates, the same buzzwords, and that's why recruiters are skipping them. But a few junior developer resumes do stand out. And those are the ones that are stealing your opportunities and are actually getting interviews, callbacks, and offers. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to build a junior developer resume that gets you hired, even with no work experience. I'll show you how to position your past jobs and experiences to sell your skills, and also how to structure your resume so it looks like it came from a professional developer, not a beginner. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Ayman. I went from working in a warehouse to landing an $80,000 developer job in under six months of learning with absolutely no degree. And I've helped dozens of career changes make that same transition. I promise you by the end of this video, you'll know the exact step-by-step -step system that I and all of my students use to stand out, get callbacks and get us hired. So without further ado, let's dive straight in. So to begin this module, I want to start with a big picture overview of all of the main components that a junior developer resume should have. So every single junior developer resume should include these five key sections. The first is going to be your header, then your experience section, your project section, your education section, and then your skills section. It's extremely important that you have every single one of these components on point. So let's actually dive into the details of how we can build out each of these parts of your resume and get them looking beautiful, starting with the header section. So the header section is probably the most straightforward part of your resume. Pretty much all you have to do is include your full name, your location, your number, your email, your portfolio website link, and then you want to add links to your LinkedIn and GitHub. Now, one thing that is extremely important to note is you want to make sure that you are using a custom domain for your portfolio website link and your email. So for example, firstnamelastname.com and me at firstnamelastname.com. So to make that easier to understand, since my name is Ayman Musa, I'd make sure my portfolio website link would be aymanmusa.com and then my custom email would be me at aymanmusa.com. And since nobody else is doing this, this is gonna set you apart from all of the other candidates who are applying for the same job as you because it just shows a level of professionalism and shows that you're actually very serious about this whole tech career and not just some random person who picked up a couple technical skills and is trying their shot at a job. Now, the best part is, and this is just one of those small 1% things that you slowly add over time, 1%, 1%, 1%, that really add up and pay dividends in the long run. Now, the best part about these custom domains is they are extremely easy to set up all you have to do is go to GoDaddy or Namecheap to buy your custom domain and then go to Google Suite or even just go back to GoDaddy to set up your custom email. And again, if you're still a bit confused, there's a million and one tutorials online that'll walk you through exactly how to set it up. All right, so the next section we're gonna talk about is going to be the experience section. This is the part of the resume that trips up most beginners because what the hell do you even put on the experience section of your resume if you don't have any experience, right? Well, listen up because what I'm about to tell you is crucial to understand. What you need to realize is you need work experience to get work experience. That is honestly just the harsh reality of the tech job market. A simple bootcamp certificate or university degree or certification is no longer enough. Companies are literally drowning in applications and they can afford to be picky and they are. And your application will literally go straight to the trash if you don't have any experience. I'm not joking. Now more specifically, and I want you to write this down. If you want to see decent success when applying for internships, you need at least six months of experience. And if you wanna see decent success when applying for junior roles, we're talking 12 months minimum. I know it sounds insane, but this is literally what I'm seeing in the market every single day. Now you're thinking, okay, this makes sense, but how the hell do I get experience on my resume if I need experience to get experience? And I get where you're coming from, but the only way to break this cycle, if you can call it that, is to create your own experience. But what do I mean when I say that? Well, there's actually several ways that you can go about this. And the first is becoming a freelance developer. So for this strategy, what you're going to do is literally approach absolutely everybody that you know, family, friends, mutuals, etc., and offer to build them a website for 100% free. It honestly doesn't even have to be a website. It can be any sort of application that they need. And at the same time, what you're going to do is go on Google Maps 
and look for local businesses that don't have a website and make them the same offer of building them a website for free. Now, once you do this for one to two weeks, I guarantee you that you're going to know at least one person who needs a website. For me, when I personally did this within the first one to two weeks, I found two people who needed a website. One of them was a friend of mine who was a trader and I just built him a portfolio website. And then the second one, which I think is the main reason why I actually got hired in my first developer job was another friend of mine, but he owned a local car detailing business. So what I actually did for him is I built out his whole website from scratch. And I also implemented an appointment booking system so that people could book in car detailing appointments. And then what that allowed me to do is take that experience and then say I was a free Lance developer on my resume. And in the dot points of that experience, I could talk about all of the features that I built out for this car detailing business. And the best thing is this experience is completely legit. So when I eventually did start landing interviews with this experience on my resume, when I was questioned about it, I was actually able to talk about real features and real stuff that I did. And even when I got to the final stages of the interview process and they were asking me for background checks and references. Again, everything was completely legit. So I was able to reach out to the guy who I built the car detailing website for. I was able to get him to speak with the company that was trying to hire me. They had a chat, everything looked good. And then I got my first offer for 80k per year. So this strategy right here is the main reason I was able to break into tech. Now the next strategy you can do to create your own experience is start your own web development agency. So for this one, this is going to be a little bit different than the freelance developer strategy, but still kind of similar. What you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing of approaching everybody you know, and then offering to build them websites for free. But then what you're going to do is actually create a company. So you're going to create your own web development agency. So you create a website for it, a LinkedIn page for it, a social media page for it, make it look like an actual real legit company. And then in the portfolio section of the agency website or the company website, you can list out the projects that you built for the two, three people that needed a website out of all the people that you asked. And you can list them as clients on your agency website. And then when you have that agency website built, the company looks legit. You've got a portfolio of like two or three websites that you built for your friends, your family, your neighbor, then you can put that down as experience on your resume. So you can say that you were a web developer at X, Y, and Z agency. And then in the experience dot points, you can just talk about the websites that you built for your friends, again, family or neighbor, whoever you built the websites for. And again, the best part about this experience is it is completely legit. So the company asks you about the experience. You can say, it's my own web development agency, but I worked with real clients. Here's the reference to this guy. Here's the reference to that guy. And then everything is going to check out and work just fine. Hey, hope you're enjoying the video so far. Just a quick side note. If you're serious about transitioning into tech and want me to guide you through the whole process, all the way from learning the skills to landing your first job, click the first link in the description to apply for my one-on-one -on -one coding bootcamp. It's where I help career transitioners like yourself land 70 to 100K developer jobs in the next three to six months guaranteed. So if that sounds like you, the first link in the description will have all of the details. But without further ado, let's get straight back into the video. Now, the next strategy is actually launching your own side project or startup. So this one is going to take a little more time investment. But what you're going to do is basically just dedicate two to three months to building a very large side project or startup. And then once you've built out this startup and you make it look completely real, and I mean, professional looking landing page, LinkedIn pages, social media pages, you want the website to be ranking on Google, you want the UI of your startup to look super professional and modern. What you can then do is then say on your resume as experience that you were the founding software engineer at X, Y, and Z startup. And again, the best part about this experience is it is completely legit. So if a company brings you in for an interview, they ask about this experience, you can literally say, yeah, I was the founding software engineer at X, Y, and Z startup. You talk about all the features that you implemented in this site project or startup that you built and bang, that is a completely legitimate experience. Now, the final strategy that I have listed on here to get past the experience paradox, as I like to call it, is actually completing what I call virtual internships. If you go on Google and you search for coding virtual internships, you're going to see that there's a ton of companies that pop up who are literally giving out virtual internship programs online that are completely free and accessible to anyone. And the best part about these virtual internships is is there are some big name companies that are offering
offering these. EA Games, JP Morgan Chase, like massive companies. And literally all you have to do is register to the virtual internship. You're going to receive four or five tasks that you have to go out and build. And then once you've completed the virtual internship, you're going to get a certificate. And then at that point, what you can do is then say you were a software engineering or web development intern at wherever you did the virtual internship program at. So if you did, for example, the EA Games virtual internship, web development intern at EA Games, and then in the dot points, you can literally just talk about all the tasks that you were assigned and completed as part of that virtual internship. And then when you get an interview and they ask about this experience, you can again talk about all the tasks that you completed as part of the virtual internship, you can show them the certificate. And if they really try and dig deeper into this experience, you can tell them that, hey, it was an online virtual internship program that I participated in. And again, you're not lying at all. This is a completely legitimate experience. Now, there's just a few ways you can get around the experience trap, but there's honestly so much more ways you can get around this. You've just got to get super creative. Now, is it fair that you have to do all of this just to land an entry level job? No, but unfortunately, that's the game that we're playing. So if you want to get hired and stand out, I'm telling you, you have to be using these strategies to get that six to 12 months of minimum experience. Now, the next section that we are going to walk through is the projects section. And this is another section that most beginners absolutely fumble. You see, what you need to realize is the point of the project section is to provide real evidence of your ability to work as a developer in a commercial environment. So this means that in your project section, you don't want to have the same easy, basic projects that everyone else has. So for example, a to-do app, a calculator app, a weather app, a Netflix clone. These projects are absolutely horrible to have on your resume because for one, they're extremely simple and easy to build out. So they don't even prove any of your technical skill. They're extremely saturated projects that everyone else has. So you're not going to stand out at all. And they serve no real purpose and have no real users. So the company has no confidence in your ability to actually work on projects that are used by real customers. The projects that you put on your resume need to be real world projects that actually demonstrate your ability to build software that is used by real customers. So for example, a really good project you could put on your resume is a freelance project that you built for a real company or that you even built for a friend or a family member or again, your neighbor. It could be a startup side project, just a quick project that you build that you deploy and then you manage to grow that to 100 real users. A Chrome extension. So let's say you build a nice little Chrome extension tool. You deploy it to the Google Chrome store and bang, it blows up and it manages to get to 500 plus downloads. The thing that all of these projects have in common is that they actually show your ability to solve real problems for real people using software development and actually build applications that are actually useful to real people. That's what your projects need to show. Now to get inspiration for some solid project ideas to put on your resume, what I recommend you do is go to this website called producthunt.com. It's a place where people come to share their different side projects and startups that they're working on at the moment. And just scrolling through here will prove to you how simple a lot of the startups people are building actually are. You don't have to build something super, super complex. It could be a habit tracker for busy parents, a procrastination tool, or like an alarm for university students who procrastinate a lot. Something very, very simple that just has utility and actually could be useful to a real person. Or if you want to build something more complex, then you can check out winning hackathon projects from top universities like Harvard, or MIT, and that'll give you a bunch of cool project ideas that you can build out. Now, getting towards the end of the resume is the education section. Now, this section can be a bit of a difficult one, especially for us career changes and transitioners, the people who don't have degrees. But how you choose to handle this situation is really going to vary depending on your situation. If you're someone who does have a computer science or some sort of IT or tech degree, what you want to do is you want to move your education section to the very top of your resume, just below the header. And obviously in that section, you want to include your degree alongside any additional training that you may have completed, i.e. any boot camps, courses, certifications. You want to include any relevant coursework or achievements that you completed or took part in as part of your degree. For example, let's say you were the president of the computer science club or you were a teaching assistant to 10 plus students. And the final thing you want to do is make sure that you do not include the graduation date 
of your degree if you're currently studying or if you completed this degree a long time ago. And the reason we do this is if you studied your degree a long time ago, but you don't have any tech work experience, then companies will be hesitant to bring you on because they're concerned about whether your skills will be outdated or not. But if you're currently studying a tech degree, companies will also be hesitant to hire and bring you on due to concerns about your ability to work full time. So basically just having the graduation date on your degree doesn't serve you at all in any way, shape or form. The best thing to do is pretty much just leave it out and let it be discussed during the interview. Now with all of these changes implemented, your education section should look something like this. Now, if you're someone who doesn't have a computer science or related degree, what you want to do is you want to keep the education section right below the project section. So towards the bottom of your resume. And the trick is we're going to include the Harvard CS50 as our education alongside any additional training, boot camps, courses, certifications that we have also done. So if you don't know what the Harvard CS50 is, it's essentially a free introduction to computer science class that Harvard has put online directly from their college curriculum. And you can literally just go online take that introduction to computer science class and then put it on your resume as education. I believe you can also even get a certificate of completion, but I'm pretty sure that's paid. So there's no point. But either way, certificate or not, having this education on your resume is going to boost your rankings because now it has that Harvard keyword on it. And with all these changes implemented, your education section should now look something like this. Now on to the final section of your resume, which is going to be the skills section. So this one is probably the most simple part of the resume and the most difficult to mess up. The goal here is essentially just to list out all of these skills and technologies that you have worked with in the past, even if you aren't that comfortable with them or have only used them once or twice. And also list out any skills that you don't currently know right now, but you're sure that you could learn pretty quickly because it's similar to some other technologies that you're working with already. And the goal here is basically just to stuff every relevant keyword into your resume to make sure that you pass the initial screenings. Because when a recruiter is not technical, a lot of the filtering is done by keywords on your resume. And if your resume doesn't include certain keywords, even if you have the best experience in the world, since the recruiter is not technical, they will just throw out your resume because it doesn't include certain keywords. So in order to make sure that doesn't happen to you, we just got to stuff all the possible skills that we can into your resume. And that my friends is how you build a resume that's going to get you hired in the harsh tech job market. If you implement all of the advice that I walked through in this video, I promise you this resume will get you 10 times more interviews and obviously job offers. So that is exactly how you build a junior developer resume that gets you hired, even with no previous work experience. Look, if you've watched this far, you're obviously serious about changing careers and making this whole tech thing work. You just need a roadmap that works. So here's what to do from here. If you want to keep learning for free, then watch the one hour and 30 minute full course right here on my channel. It breaks down everything I know about how to transition into the tech industry as a career changer and i'll pop that free course up on the screen somewhere right now or if you're done wasting time trying to piece together everything yourself and you want me to personally coach you and help you get hired guaranteed and click the first link in the description to apply for my one-on-one -on -one boot camp today it's where i help career changes just like yourself land 70 to 100k developer roles in the next three to six months guaranteed thanks for watching make sure to like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video